Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to fix a bodice that curls out in the front. This is a super common problem. Let's tackle it together. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche? This channel is for you. In today's video, I'm going to show you two simple steps to the process of fixing this curling bodice. Super easy. So I'm sure if you're familiar with gowns, you guys have seen this, how the top of the sweetheart bust line will curl out a little bit. So I'm going to show you that and then also at the end of the video, I've got a little hint for you from our BSD bestie Pam Overstreet. Every now and then, if you guys think of a hint that you want to share, pop them down in the comments below and I'll be happy to share it in a video. So that's coming up at the end of this tutorial. So look forward to it. It's going to teach you how to thread your needle so that your thread doesn't get tangled. Alright, so on with this project of fixing the curling bodice. I'm using the number 40 and that you can read all this information about the thread there. It's a, you know, pretty thick thread, kind of medium. It's not like upholstery or anything like that, but it's fairly strong. So I'm going to double it up and run it through my needle, make sure I'm using a nice strong thread and I'm using a nice long strong needle and I'm going to make my knot. I do have a video on how to knot your thread. It's a super fast way of knotting your thread. It's also adjustable for the size of the knot. The more swings you take around the needle, the larger the knot. So I'm going to start a little bit backed off from the edge of the bodice. Now from this knot, I'm going to sew all the way up to that outer layer of the bodice and I'm going to lock my thread with a little knot there. Now I'm going to start my stitches staying right there on the very edge. I don't want it visible from the outside, but I don't want to come too far down into the bodice area either. I usually do, I don't know, maybe about a centimeter long stitches. You want the stitch length to be long enough to get a nice gather. If it's too far apart, um, your gather may be too wavy and obvious and look ripply. And if it's too close, you're going to have a hard time getting a gather on it. So try maybe about a centimeter long stitch length. And I'm going to run that stitch all the way down to the center front, the bottom part of the, that peak of the, uh, sweetheart where it forms the, the V there at the bottom. While I'm sewing this, take a second to hit like, also the subscribe button, and if you've subscribed, hit the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload. So now I'm going to pull on this, and I'm going to over pull a little bit, okay? So I want it to curl in a little more than what I'm looking for it to do, because when I knot it, I'm going to have a hard time knotting it completely flush with the dress without some of the thread backing back out and I want to compensate for that. So over pull it a little bit and then after I knot it, I'm going to do my three knots like I usually do and then I'm going to hide the tail is what I call that. Pull that tail through, snip it off so the tail is down between the layers so you don't have a tail showing. Now I'm going to put a touch of the clear hypo cement on there to hold those knots. And I've never seen that yellow even many years later. So I'm going to do that and make sure this is evenly spaced and there's not too many rumples. Now you can see I've got that curve in there. I'm going to start stitching. This is the second step. Okay. I'm going to move down about three quarters of an inch to an inch from the edge of the bodice. I'm going to move down and I'm going to put a tack all the way through. Now if you had some type of a satin gown that this would show, 
and look really bad to have that stitch on the outside, then you just want to dip down far enough to catch the seam allowance of that princess seam, um, the, that front seam that's running down the, the front of the bust, the vertical one, you'd want to catch that seam allowance on the inside. So you do need to make sure you go through all the layers here, but not necessarily the outer layer. But we do get to go through the outer layer when it's beaded, and that's great. Because um, a lot of times you'll find the beaded gowns sometimes curl a little more, just because of the weight of the beads on the outside of the dress. Um, especially like if it's on tulle or something like that. So again, I've got my three knots. And this one, it's not quite as important to hide the tail. I still could have, but nobody's going to see that. It's going to be deep on the inside of the bodice. And in most cases, it's going to also be covered with a bust cup or a bust pad. So um, you could keep going all the way to that side seam if needed. Now, this is a, the finished result. And you can see how flush that is laying. And those waves are barely noticeable. If that was up against a skin tone, you wouldn't hardly be able to see it at all. If the waves are a little too noticeable, just stitch it again and make sure your stitch length is a little closer together. Now, here's Pam's super helpful hint for all of us. You're gonna double this very fine thread and um, you need to make sure that your thread is much thinner than the width of the eye end of the needle um, because you don't want your thread to be bulkier than your needle otherwise you're gonna get caught when you try to sew with this but I'm very slowly showing you I know it's out of focus it's hard to get it to focus on it but stay with me here what I did was I made a little loop and look I put those I ran those tails back through that loop this, the way I think of it, is like hanging a scarf on a curtain rod. How you throw the loop over and then you put the tails through the loop and pull it. That's how you form that. I hope this has helped you. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And thanks for watching.